برطانوی وزیر خارجہ ڈومینک راب اور وزیر خارجہ شاہ محمود قریشی اس وقت مشترکہ نیوز کانفرنس کریں یا آپ کو لیے چلتے ہیں ناظرین برطانوی وزیر خارجہ ڈومینک راب اور پاکستانی وزیر خارجہ شاہ محمود قریشی اس وقت مشترکہ نیوز کانفرنس کر رہے ہیں فور یور پریزنس اٹس اے پلیئر ٹو ہیو فارن سیکرٹری ڈومینک راب جوائننگ فارن منسٹر شاہ محمود قریشی فار دس جوائنٹ اسٹیک آؤٹ The Foreign Secretary's visit uh, is a continuation of the recent contacts between the leadership of the two countries. The two Prime Ministers spoke on 18th of August. The two Ministers had conversations on 16th and 27th of August. Uh, the Foreign Secretary visited Torkham earlier this morning and uh, the two sides had uh, talks Uh, the minister is coming just out of the talks, uh, full spectrum discussion on bilateral issues, the situation in Afghanistan and I would like to uh, invite the two ministers uh, to uh, interact with you starting with Foreign Minister Qureshi. Thank you. Uh, I am pleased to welcome you to uh, Pakistan. Uh, your first trip uh, in, in an official position. I am told that you've been here before in a different capacity, but uh, now in your official capacity, you're uh, in Pakistan and we welcome you. Um, I wanted to share, ladies and gentlemen, we've had a good discussion um, on uh, a host of things. Obviously, Afghanistan uh, dominated uh, the conversation. Uh, the evolving situation in Afghanistan is of uh, paramount importance to them, us, everyone, the region and the world. Uh, so we did have a good discussion on that. And we also had a very good discussion on where our bilateral relations stand. And I'm happy to share that they are strong. Uh, they are valued on both sides. and. Uh, We have uh, fortunately now developed a platform called the ESD platform, the Enhanced Strategic Dialogue Platform for further engagement and, and to have frank, candid discussions so that there are tangible outcomes from those discussions. Uh, I've, had, uh, I've invited uh, uh, the Foreign Secretary that uh, the next meeting, uh, the next review of that uh, ESD should take place uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we, have to, we have to host it in Islamabad and we will be happy to host you in Islamabad for that uh, dialogue. And the idea is that through this dialogue we upgrade our relationship to a different level, to a higher level. It's, that is my desire. Uh, on Afghanistan, uh, I shared my assessment. Uh, with the Foreign Secretary of the evolving situation. Uh, things are evolving, they're, they're nothing certain yet, but they're evolving and we are both hoping that they evolve in the right direction, the direction of peace and stability. You want that, I want that, the region wants that, the world wants that and so we are in this partnership for, for peace. Uh, I also shared uh, uh, what in our view should be the way forward uh, and I am happy to share that uh, there's a convergence on, uh, on the steps that are, uh, need to be taken uh, in the days ahead. Uh, we also had a discussion and I pointed out uh, the, uh, the steps taken uh, by the government of Pakistan, uh, uh, the tremendous uh, 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 progress made by Pakistan on the issue of FATF. Uh, Pakistan is very keen to get out of the grey list uh, and we have taken steps, legislative steps, administrative steps uh, and concrete steps uh, that are being today recognized uh, 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 by the world. Uh, I have urged the Foreign Secretary uh, to be supportive to Pakistan on the steps that we have taken on that score. 
red list uh, obviously uh, is, is an issue uh, that has been discussed uh, in Pakistan. Uh, I did touch on that subject on how um, you know, um, uh, people feel about it and what needs to be done to get Pakistan off the red list into the ember list. And I'm happy that uh, uh, there is a meeting uh, uh, at the technical level that has been arranged uh, on Monday. Uh, Dr. Faisal Sultan uh, will be representing uh, Pakistan and uh, putting forward uh, Pakistan's point of view. And I've also suggested uh, a number of steps that can be taken, you know, that uh, make, uh, you know, both sides comfortable uh, on how to deal and how to overcome this challenge and uh, how to get Pakistan into the amber list. On the whole, it was a frank, candid discussion, and thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, can I say uh, what a pleasure it is to be here in Pakistan, to have uh, a very good, constructive, cordial uh, meeting with His Excellency Foreign Minister Qureshi, um, both on Afghanistan but also the opportunities for the bilateral relationship, and I look forward to seeing the Prime Minister um, later on today. The bedrock, the basis of the UK-Pakistan relationship is very strong. Um, uh, and like uh, His Excellency, the UK has desire, the will, and uh, to, to take it to ne the next level. Um, we also uh, have very clear and shared interests in the future of Afghanistan. After the Kabul airlift, we evacuated over 15,000 people um, to the UK, uh, which was uh, un unprecedented for modern times, certainly for the UK. Um, and we're working together to continue the secure, safe passage for those who haven't yet made it out of Afghanistan, uh, whether they're British nationals or indeed uh, those who have worked for us. Um, and uh, it was important to, to have the opportunity, and I'm very grateful uh, to the government for making this possible, to go up to talk and to see for myself the situation on the ground uh, and talk to people on the ground and, and really understand it uh, at that level. Um, as for the UK, uh, we're very mindful of the situation for Afghanistan's neighbours. We will be shouldering our humanitarian responsibilities. We've uh, increased our <coughs> aid budget for Afghanistan this year to £286 million. And we will also be supporting those countries who face the greatest demands uh, for those uh, who may be displaced in the weeks ahead. We've also sent a team, a 15-person rapid deployment team, to the region as a whole to make sure that we can help with the logistics, the practical arrangements that we also discussed for allowing people safely and securely to cross uh, borders if it's into third countries to get back to the UK. And, of course, that's a way of easing the burden uh, on uh, some of Afghanistan's neighbours. Um, I'm also pleased to announce that today we're releasing uh, the first tranche of that extra aid uh, money that I mentioned. We are, send, uh, we are sending up to £30 million of life-saving support uh, to Afghanistan's neighbours and that will include Pakistan so that uh, there is the money to provide the basics, the shelter, the household necessities, the sanitation uh, for those uh, who come across the border. We recognise this problem. We want to be part of the solution uh, with such a key partner. We also stand by our commitments for Afghanistan's future and I think there are a number of priorities that we discussed today, um, uh, the humanitarian lifeline, preserving regional stability, uh, holding the Taliban to the assurances that they made, uh, making sure that deeds follow words uh, and of course making sure that Afghanistan cannot be used and will not be used as a base or a safe haven for terrorist groups in the future. Uh, we're building, uh, and it's important for us all to work together to build an international grouping coalition around these core elements, uh, around safe passage, uh, around all the other elements, strategic and otherwise, whether it's through the G7, NATO, uh, we've had a recent UN Security Council resolution, and of course the regional partners are going to be absolutely key to forging a, uh, a, way, <coughs> a way forward. And Pakistan's support and role will be vital. Uh, and if we come together in that way, with all of those that are interested and want a positive way forward, we will be able to exercise the maximum moderating and positive influence on the Taliban. Uh, we have a shared interest in supporting a stable and peaceful future for Afghanistan. And I thought with a very good conversation we had about uh, the, the common uh, and the commonality of interest in how we pursue that going forward. 
We also discussed all of the bilateral issues that uh, uh, His Excellency raised. We listened. We understand the concerns on issues like the Red List. Um, uh, and all the more important that as close partners we really intensify the bilateral relationship, uh, particularly with, I think, a big anniversary for our bilateral relations, uh, which is coming next year. Thank you very much, and it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. I understand the ministers have time for a couple of questions. Uh, would you kindly introduce yourself while posing the question? Uh, a gentleman on the left side. Right side, sorry. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Foreign Secretary, welcome to Pakistan. This is Naveed Siddiqui from Dawn News. I have a question regarding the uh, uh, red list. In the backdrop of uh, red list uh, decision, the uh, relationship between Pakistan and the UK uh, seems to be strained. Even the people of uh, Pakistan are very much annoyed uh, with this biased uh, decision of the uh, Britain, uh, British government. How can, these, uh, how can the ties between the, the, uh, the two friendly countries can be improved? Sir, thank you. Well, thank you. Look, I totally understand uh, the impact it has uh, on both Pakistani and British nationals. Our community is one of the great things about our relationship. It's built on the very personal relations by the diaspora in this country and the, the, the British-Pakistani diaspora uh, in the UK. So these things are important. Um, uh, I also uh, commend the efforts of the Government of Pakistan to contain the pandemic. We are working to manage the impact of COVID on both countries. We have a shared interest. It is an international uh, challenge, not a, not a domestic or national level challenge. Um, so we do understand that this is a sensitive issue and a difficult issue. We base our decisions on uh, the technical evidence, the scientific basis, and I understand that that is often contested. Um, which is all the more reason why it is, uh, I think, good that the uh, Pakistan's special advisor to Prime Minister Khan, Dr. Uh, Sultan, will be holding expert level talks uh, with uh, um, UK public health authorities. Uh, we want to find a way through. No one wants Pakistan off the red list more than I do, but we take these decisions at a technical level, um, and I think the smart thing for us to do is work together to, to enable that to happen as soon as safely and responsibly can be done. Uh, there is a request from the centre, the lady in the middle. Hello, Nicola Kareem from the BBC. Uh, the first one to the Foreign Secretary. Um, we have seen the Taliban issue a statement today after following the meeting with Simon Gass in Qatar. Can you tell us if uh, uh, anything substantial came out of that meeting? And secondly, the £286 million in aid, who will that be handed to? And uh, to Mr Qureshi, um, hello sir, can you tell me if your relationship with the Taliban is going to be conditions based? And if so, what will those conditions be? Well, thank you very much. So we uh, are, I need to face up to the new reality in Afghanistan. Um, we've got a new charge d'affaires for uh, Afghanistan based in Doha, Martin uh, um, Longdon. And on top of that, Simon Gass, the, the Prime Minister's Special Envoy. The approach that we're taking is we, we don't recognise the Taliban as a government. Actually, the UK doesn't engage in the practice of recognising governments as opposed to states. But we do see the importance of being able to engage and have a direct line of communication. Um, and the reason being is uh, clearly uh, there are a whole range of issues that need to be discussed including, first and foremost at the moment, the question of safe passage of British nationals and our so-called Arab workers, the Afghans who work for the UK government. Uh, we need to be able to convey direct messages on these things. Uh, there are particular cases outstanding which I won't go into because of the sensitivity, but we need to be able to have that dialogue. And I would say more generally, the Taliban has made a series of undertakings and some of them uh, are positive at the level of words, but we need to test them and see that they translate into deeds. We can't do that unless we have at least some channel of dialogue. Um, in terms of the aid, look, there are two areas of focus. And again, this comes back to the test, some of the early tests for the Taliban. Uh, no one wants to see the economic uh, uh, and social fabric of Afghanistan collapse. Um, I I'm, uh, can't see how that would be in the interest of the Taliban, let alone ordinary Afghans. We certainly don't want to see that to happen. So we would uh, be willing not to fund aid via the Taliban, but through the humanitarian 
organizations that operate inside Afghanistan. For that to happen, there needs to be a safe and secure environment. Uh, so again, that's an early test for the Taliban. But we're willing uh, to make sure that we do our bit with the international community um, to, to fund the humanitarian agencies, the, the lifeline for ordinary Afghans. But there needs to be a safe and permissive environment for that. Um, we also, as I mentioned, will support those regional partners, uh, uh, particularly like Pakistan, who uh, I can imagine is very concerned about the risk of numbers coming across the border. We'll want to make sure we can support those partners in the region, deal with that. And I think that's the holistic approach, the strategic approach we're taking. Uh, <coughs> responding to your question, ma'am, uh, you said, will our relations uh, be condition-based? Right. Well, uh, when we determine conditions, we have to determine uh, choices available. You know, some have the choice of uh, getting up and leaving. We don't have that choice. We are neighbors. Uh, we have to coexist. Geography ties us together. So our approach has to be somewhat different, realistic. Uh, as the Foreign Secretary said, there's a new reality. Uh, that's come about and uh, what we have said we have been uh, while the negotiations were on in Doha you know and you know we facilitated the peace process uh, uh, it couldn't uh, sort of uh, come to a, a sort of a conclusion you know there was a stalemate but what we said was we have no favorites we have learned over the years that Afghanistan is a country which comprises of different ethnic groups. Taliban represents one, and, 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 a, and a prominent one, but the others. And that is why we have said uh, it is in your interest as neighbors and friends and well wishers to adopt an inclusive approach. Uh, when we uh, are dealing with Afghanistan, please do not forget uh, that there are certain compulsions that we have to deal with that perhaps you don't have to. For example, there are daily crossings of about 20 to 25,000 people in, in normal times. That's a huge number. Can we block them? No, we can't. Can we regulate them? Yes, we should. Uh, are there risks? Yes, they are. There are organizations over there that are not friendly to you, us, and, or anyone. So we have to guard against that as well. Bulk of their trade goes through Pakistan. Uh, do we keep our borders open? Can we close them? And if we do close them, are we contributing to a humanitarian crisis over there? Right. And if we have to trade with them, then who do we talk to? Anyone who's in charge engaging with that authority is a compulsion uh, that we have to deal with. So, recognizing these challenges, Pakistan has said it's for Afghans to decide about their future. We will engage with a, a, uh, a government that has the backing of the people of Afghanistan. Our focus is on the people of Afghanistan. Uh, we want to help the people of Afghanistan because we feel they have suffered. They have suffered for decades. And we honestly feel that there is an opportunity. After 40 years, there is a real opportunity for peace. So if there is one, anyone who is uh, advocating peace and stability, it's, uh, you know, in Taliban as a friend, uh, and we will, we will work with that reality. We are waiting to see uh, what happens in, in, in the next few days, uh, like you, with eyes and ears open. Question from the gentleman here. Thank you. This is Zulkarnan from ARY News. Mr. Secretary, do you believe that uh, the uh, takeover of a speedy takeover of Afghanistan by the Taliban, it's indicate intelligence failure. Thank you. 
Uh, look, the the takeover, I think it's fair to say, was faster than anyone had anticipated. Uh, not just uh, the United Kingdom or NATO allies, uh, but I was talking with our friends here, and I suspect the Taliban and ordinary Afghans were taken by surprise. Um, we can look at all the different factors that relate to it, um, but uh, I, I think there was a common widespread um, uh, surprise at the speed with which the, uh, the, the consolidation of power happened. Question from the lady uh, in the middle, uh, in the pink. Hi, I'm Emma Clark from AFP, and this is a question for Mr. Rob. Um, you said that you've been, you want nations to exert mas maximum moderating influence. Uh, what are you looking for from the Taliban? And also, is there a danger of pushing them too far, and the group turning inward and embracing radical tendencies? I think it's a good question. Um, I think we need to set some early tests. Of course, actually on the evacuation between the middle of August and the end of August, there was dialogue on the ground and we, we wouldn't have got um, uh, 15,000, more than 15,000 people out without at least some measure of constructive dialogue with the Taliban. So we note that. There have been further undertakings made and so to address your point, I think we would hold them to the undertakings that they have made um, and test the sincerity and the, uh, and the will to deliver on those. Uh, the kinds of things we're talking about are reflected now in a UN Security Council resolution that the UK uh, pushed very strongly for with France and the US. Uh, we noticed that uh, Russia and China uh, abstained, acquiesced, I like to think of it. We need to bring a stronger uh, basic consensus about those issues. I think the Security Council resolution raises many of the issues that I've discussed, described to you today, and also uh, His Excellency, uh, the Foreign Minister. Um, and we need to try and forge a stronger uh, group of countries and a wider group of countries around those basic issues, uh, more inclusive government, safe passage out, no safe haven for terrorism, the humanitarian lifeline that it's in all sides interest to see uh, uh, allowed and preserved to preserve regional stability and there are a range of other things. So I think it's important at this stage to set uh, or, or to judge the Taliban by these early initial probably quite modest tests and see whether they can deliver um, and I hope that answers and reconciles what I think is a, a reasonable challenge to the international community. Yes, I think that's what I'm uh, describing. If you said early uh, tests based on what they have said they're willing to do, uh, I think um, that's a perfectly reasonable approach. Uh, any uh, regime uh, or set of leaders to undertakings they've made, I, I think, is uh, reasonable. Can we have a question from the gentleman in the middle? <coughs> uh, this is Zaid Farooq Malik, editor of the Daily Metro Watch. Mr. Qureshi, you have tell us about all the things, Afghanistan, FATF, Red List. You did not spoke on Kashmir. It's a, it's a, it's a big issue. There is a, a lot of human rights violations. The dead bodies are not safe. They cannot bury them on their will. Your comments, please, sir. I, I, I got your question. In fact, I did. I did. Uh, and I, uh, I drew the attention of the Foreign Secretary on how uh, Sayyid Ali Gilani's family was treated yesterday, the way his body was snatched by the security forces, uh, couldn't even get a decent burial. That's a fundamental right, uh, which the family and the old man at 92 was denied. Uh, and people feel very strongly about it and what they do not realize yeah okay you can stop that but there will be funerals all over all over uh, Pakistan there's going to be one today in Islamabad every parliamentarian every minister the president everyone will go there you know had you not been there I would have been there right so you cannot, you cannot suppress, you know, uh, human uh, feelings and sentiments. Um, uh, so I did talk about that. Uh, the atrocities, yes, uh, and 
let me be honest, uh, the Foreign Secretary very clearly said, our position on Kashmir is known. It's, it's a stated position, but that does not stop us from raising human rights issues. And if they do that, thank you. Well, you'll know uh, the long-standing position of the UK um, is that it is for India and Pakistan to find a lasting political resolution to the situation in Kashmir, uh, which we certainly want to see. It's got to take into account the wishes of the Kashmiri people. It's not for the UK to prescribe or impose uh, a solution or, or even to act as a mediator. We encourage both sides to maintain a positive dialogue, a constructive dialogue, uh, which is going to be necessary if there's going to be a, a lasting diplomatic solution. Um, of course, the, the pace, the scope, the modalities will be for them to decide. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I am afraid uh, we don't have time for more questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. وزیر خارجہ شاہ محمود قریشی اور برطانوی ہم منصب ڈومینک ریب مشترکہ نیوز کانفرنس کر رہے تھے وزیر خارجہ شاہ محمود قریشی نے کہا کہ برطانوی ہم منصب کے ساتھ افغانستان کے معاملے پر بات چیت ہوئی ہے دونوں ملکوں کے تعلقات اس دورے سے مزید مستحکم ہوں گے برطانوی وزیر خارجہ ڈومینک ریب نے کہا کہ پاکستان اور برطانیہ کے تعلقات مضبوط ہیں افغانستان کے معاملے پر پاکستان اور برطانیہ مشترکہ خیالات رکھتے ہیں